We are talking about quality metrics, and in this video, we're going to talk about maintainability index. So I am already, I've, I've already cloned down this repository here for requests. And if we look at what I have here in my developer folder, I've got this request folder. That is this repository that I've already cloned using git clone. And let's go ahead and jump down to maintainability index for a little bit about that. So maintainability index, what, what even is that? Um, let's go ahead and just open up one of these links here. So this is, uh, we're going to use radon to measure this. And maintainability index is a metric that allows us to have a guesstimate of how maintainable a project is or the source code is. So how easy, easy is it to support and change? Um, we've also done a measurement for modifiability and changeability looking at GitHub metrics and the number of files in a Git commit. This is a different way we might look at it. Now, you can see here we've got uh, what may look kind of like a complicated formula to calculate this. And there's a little bit of debate about how accurate this value is and what it might mean for a project but it is a way that you can see how a project's maintainability index changes over time and get maybe a rough idea um, of things that you might want to look into that could potentially improve the maintainability of your system and the way that you can weigh the scores uh, you can actually open this link as well but basically you're going to get a number that's between 0 and 100 and if it's in this very large range of 20 to 100, then we would consider that good maintainability. If it's between 10 and 19, it's so-so. And if it's between 0 and 9, it's difficult to maintain. So we're going to use Radon to pull some numbers and get a rough idea. And this would be something interesting to compare to commit size and how maintainable did you think it was based on commit size versus maintainability index from this formula. So we're going to go ahead and just keep this easy. I'm going to copy this. And um, remember, if, we, if you watch some of the other videos, then you saw that in the project we're looking at, all of our source code is in this source requests folder. So this is the path we're going to use. So let me go ahead and paste this in, but I'm going to update this part where I have Python code directory. And I'm going to put in, uh, in the current directory I'm in, so dot slash is my current directory, requests, source, requests. That's my path. And then we've got some other stuff that's basically going to take what we get from Radon and then kick out just the values we care about. So you can run just this part to see what Radon's going to give you. Um, let's actually just go ahead and do that. Paste. Let's just do just that part. Oh, it's going to make me type it again. Requests, source, requests. Um, OK, so that's looking at basically all the files in that folder. And it's giving me a letter grade for each of those. So in this particular repository, they're all A's. Um, but let's go ahead and do this as um, something we can put into a spreadsheet. So I'm going to go ahead and change that directory one more time from what I just copy and pasted. <coughs> OK, so now I've got these values which look like they're just not even quite rounded, but the integer values from those scores. So it's going to be close enough for what we need. You can edit um, this grep and this SED to go ahead and make it exactly how you want it. But this is good enough for what we want uh, for the moment. So this is going to be, um, we're going to do this kind of like how we did cohesion with a range. Uh, so instead of values, I'm going to say MI for maintainability index. I'm going to paste those in. Okay, and um, 
remember uh, what we did for cohesion is I put these different values in for maximum and minimum value so that we could calculate based on a range. I'm going to do the same thing here. Let's just copy and paste those if you've already done that work. If not, um, you want a minimum value starting with 0 or anything bigger than 0 and then also up to and including 10. And then from here, you're exclusive on the minimum, so greater than 10, but less than or equal to 20. And then I just did increments of 10. Um, and then we're going to say our frequency. And uh, we're going to do count ifs. So depending on multiple criteria, we're going to set our range. In this case, it's just this small range here. Count if that range meets these criteria, so it's greater than or equal to zero in this case, um, and our range meets this criteria. All right, something got weird there. Let's do that. Um, that should be what we want. Let's double check what we did in cohesion here. Yes, okay, and then we can do the dollar signs to lock that in so we can copy and paste this easier. So we put a dollar sign in front of the column and the row, um, and that locks it in. So if I copy and paste, my ranges stay the same, um, but my uh, cells that I'm comparing to change. All right, so let's go ahead and do that all the way down. All right, so I don't have anything that's less than or equal to 20, and if I do a quick scan, that looks accurate. I do have two values that are between 20 and 30. Um, so let's see, here's 21 and 25, so that checks out. Let's see what is between 90 and 100. I should have four values. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it looks like my frequency is calculating all right. Let's just highlight those, insert chart, and there you go. So don't forget you need to add a title to your chart, get some labels on your X and Y axis. But now that we've got our, um, let's go ahead and name this. These are our maintainability index scores. Um, higher scores, remember, we said that if it's between 20 and 100, it's considered maintainable. And this looks like it's done a really good job. It's actually got zero below 20. So those are all A's, which is what we saw earlier when we ran this. We had all A's all the way down. So do this to a couple more projects. What do you find? And uh, where is there room for improvements? Um, so that's how you can calculate maintainability index. And again, this could also be very interesting to compare to the number of files in the git commits um, because that's another way of looking at maintainability and modifiability uh, or modifiability and changeability which can be an indicator of maintainability so uh, do some comparisons see what you come up with and then uh, make sure you have everything labeled and then use those visuals in your analysis when you write it up into a, a one or two page paper